I'm here this afternoon with Representative Molly White. Um, I think I'm back in Belton. <laughs> I've been around the county a little bit today. Um, Molly, from everything that I've heard and the people I've been interviewing, it appears without much question that there were quite a few people that were denied their rights to vote. How has that impacted you personally? Well, it's very disturbing, very, very disturbing. In all of my years here in Bell County and being involved with the elections, being an election judge, being a clerk, I have never, ever witnessed such an election fiasco as I have this past session, this past election. That was March 1st, right. the primary. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of discussions are going on uh, with, say, the county um, election administration office? Is there any talk on their part about uh, what could be done to set this right? Or They have never contacted me. You know, even prior to the recount or after the recount, other than the fact that it has been scheduled and that we needed to find the counters for our side. Um, they've never talked about the folks that were not allowed to, to vote. They just talked about, you know, recounting the ballots that were cast. Um, but on election night, um, people started coming into where we were watching the election mm -hmm. results, and it's at the Bell County Expo Center, and started telling me about events that were happening at different precincts where either they voted or didn't get to vote, or where they were running out of ballots. And I didn't know any of this stuff. I stayed in my precinct or, you know, it, all day long, and yes, they did run out of ballots uh, twice, but they were able to get what they needed. Um, but when I started hearing reports about, um, you know, the, the shortage of ballots and then people being turned away and not being a allowed to vote, uh, and then those reports started coming in as the, the days following the election, even yes. up until today. And uh, it was very, very concerning. I could not believe that anybody would be turned away from voting um, if there was a question. Now, if they're not a registered voter, then we can understand that. But right. if they're a registered voter um, and they're not on a list or they're standing in line yes. and, and before time runs out and said to go home, that's very concerning. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the results of your race was that uh, you came out initially 118 votes short, is that correct? Initially it was 118 short and you know after early votes came in and I was 700 behind, I was very shocked. I yeah. really thought it would be the other way around. Yeah. I really did. Uh, because of the amount of work that we put into this campaign, canvassing our district twice, uh, I just felt very confident mm -hmm. that we were going to come out pretty strong. Yeah. Uh, but by the time all the other precincts votes came in and they didn't, we didn't get the results until 6 or 7 o'clock the next morning. Oh no! Yeah. We oh. did not get the results. We had to go to bed without knowing um, because oh. they were still trying to count uh, the votes for the precincts that had to stay open late to allow people to vote. Wow. And, you know, so in one place, they closed the doors at 7 o'clock and people standing in line past a certain line, they couldn't vote even though they were there. In other places, they kept the doors open until 9 o'clock until everybody had a chance to vote, you know, waiting on the uh, emergency ballots to come in. Uh, so anyway, we did not get the results reported. I, I heard it on the news actually the next morning. Oh my, oh my. Well, 700 shy in the um, uh, early election and then to, it sounds like you were gaining tremendous momentum uh, to only fall, it ended up 118, then the recount, I think 104 or 104 something like that. 104 with the recount. Yeah. And that's because they had one precinct that was not voted at all, I mean counted at all during the initial, initial count. Yeah. So things were just one fiasco after another. Um, the people that you have visited with that uh, were not allowed to vote, what, uh, what is their feeling as far as what should be done? Well, they believe in a recount. Or, or re-vote. A re-vote, yes. They really do. They, mm -hmm. they, 
even the folks that worked the precincts um, uh, believe that there should be a revote, um, especially with those who did not get to vote. Uh, yeah. I know of one woman who uh, said that she had requested a mail-in ballot, or her mail-in ballot and never came. So she went to her precinct that day to vote, and they would not allow her vote, saying that she'd already voted. She explained the situation. No, I never got my ballot. Well, I'm sorry you can't vote. They should have given her a provisional ballot. Yes, yeah. Well, the same experience happened to another man. And uh, he said, I'm telling you, my wife got her ballot. I didn't get mine. So they let him vote on a provisional ballot. So there was such inconsistencies across this whole district. and. Um, but people are upset, you know, they're very upset, especially those who got turned away and were not allowed to vote. Yeah, one of the young men that I uh, interviewed earlier today talked about literally feeling like a criminal because his rights had been taken away from him. And that was an interesting parallel for him to uh, connect it that way. It should never, ever have happened mm -hmm. in the state of Texas or anywhere across the country. And I don't know of any other uh, county in this state that's had such problems uh, besides McLennan County. And they, it was just a very close race. It wasn't that they were running out of ballots, but it was a close race and they were able to get a recount or a re-vote on a particular race in McLennan County. Have they, Mine was totally different. Have, have they scheduled that re-vote? Yes. It's, it's going to take place the same time as the runoff elections. I see. Okay. So that is something that you would like to actually see happen uh, in your case. And I think I heard that there were a couple other races that yes. potentially were as close and that people were denied. I mean, because they weren't allowed, if they weren't allowed to vote, they didn't get to vote local, state, or national. Right. Exactly. So. Exactly. It's been very disturbing. And the more reports that I hear, that are coming in daily. I'm getting emails or phone calls. The more disturbed I am, and when I, you know, when I see precincts that I should have clearly won, that I lost by maybe one or twenty or forty, it's, you know, it just causes me to question. You know, are those the precincts that had such trouble? And I know most of them are. Yeah. Yeah. Running out of ballots. And they're, they're the more rural, that's a hard word to say rural. sometimes, uh, uh, locations. So and they it, were very much yeah. in my pocket. You know, they were very much supportive of mm -hmm. me because mm -hmm. of, of, you know, my strong conservative stance. Yeah. Uh, and we worked those areas very hard. Um, you know, but if the race was a clean race and, and no problems, no reports, and I lost, that's fine. You know. Right. Uh, but when I hear... Uh, voters being turned away and sometimes in just about every precinct that they ran out of ballots people left because either they didn't want to stand in line or they were told to go home. Well and it's very hard for the older folks to stand for any great length of time. Health issues and things along that line kick in as well which is unfortunate. So yeah, it's been very disturbing, very disturbing that especially when voters were denied the right to vote. Yeah. So, in your situation, what's the next step? Or what do you recommend so that this doesn't happen um, to anyone else in the future? Well, this is going to help get the word out. Uh, we do need to talk to the Republican Party of Texas. We need to send them this information and have a dialogue uh, and have them really look into this particular county and see exactly what the problems were. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's one thing running out of ballots and then having to copy ballots, but when you even run out of paper to copy the ballots on and you're sending people, you're telling them to go make their own copies somewhere, and people having to leave that polling location and go to a Staples and make copies, that's another thing. Yeah. You know. That is totally another thing. Total incompetence, total yeah. unpreparedness yeah. Uh, in this county, and it should have never, ever happened. 
it brings up the question is as to the training of the election judges and clerks as well into how to handle a situation like this. Yes, it was a totally uh, large turnout, larger than in anticipated, but there still should have been better training probably. Yeah, there were so many inconsistencies at different polling locations. Mm -hmm. For example, the one polling location where the man who did not receive his mail-in ballot, they knew exactly what to do. The woman who didn't receive her mail-in ballot, they were clueless as what to do, turned her away. Um, you're going to hear uh, another report um, where the clerk, an elderly clerk, didn't even know what to do when they couldn't find the voter's name on the register, even though he had his card and his ID yeah. with him. Yeah. And uh, it, it just horrendous. At one precinct, um, they requested 50 ballots. They got like 100. And they said, we don't need this many. We only need 50. Well, they wouldn't take them back. Um, but then the clerks or the, the um, election administrator goes to one precinct to try to get ballots from them to take somewhere else. And you can't do that because they're all the, numbered. Uh, the precincts are different. Yeah. yeah. Because of the county commissioners and whatever. But anyway, just the total inconsistencies and unpreparedness of a lot of clerks, it, it, it was unbelievable. It just never, ever should have happened. Yeah. So I've been a county judge. I mean, an election judge. Yeah. I've been an elected clerk for years. Yeah. And never, never did we have any problems like that. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Anything else you would like to add? Well, um, I just feel like this needs to be looked into further, whether it changes the election results or not. Uh, it needs to be looked into further to make sure it never happens again. Anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Everyone has the right to vote. Every polling location should be fully prepared. Every judge, every clerk, fully trained. Yes. To know exactly what to do in every situation. And yeah. if they are not competent to do it this time, they probably shouldn't be able to do it next time. I think that's well said. My, Representative White, I appreciate very much your time this afternoon.